at those peppers. They're like bananas. It's a good year. Let's make some salsa. Okay, we're into the uh, latter part of August and the tomatoes are starting to come on pretty heavy. So I'm out here harvesting all of these. These are a lovely chocolate cherry tomato. We have several varieties and so when I go to make sauce, it's not about necessarily using a traditional sauce plum shaped tomato, but how to get the best color, flavor, consistency of sauce using the wide variety that I grow. I think I have uh, a dozen varieties in this year and some really nice performers that we're gonna save seed from and some that are meh, so they'll go by the wayside. But just out here doing a harvest and prune. I fed these guys about a week ago. I'll probably feed them really well one more time just for that final push as we go into fall and then you know see how the weather is looking and how they're how they're faring come mid-september so maybe hit them one more time we'll see These are those Father John tomatoes. They're uh, specifically bred to be a sauce tomato. They're different than most plum tomatoes in that they're indeterminate rather than a determinate bush variety. So this is the first year I've grown these. Got uh, starts from a friend, so we'll definitely save some seed. The rest of these I'm pretty much going to uh, sauce up. I'll steam them in a pot and then run them through the food mill and then reduce the resulting puree that will be free of seeds and skins down to the right consistency for my salsa. And there we have all the tomatoes washed, cored, any bruises, bad spots removed, hail damage. And we'll just cover this pot, put it on low, and let the juice from the tomatoes start to steam everything until it's soft enough to go through the food mill. So I've got everything in here, cherry tomatoes, chocolate cherry tomatoes, golden pear tomatoes. Oh, there's some uh, Cherokee purples. Pretty much everything that we grow. And when this all cooks down together, the color of the resulting sauce should be amazing. The tomatoes are cooking down. All this liquid is just what is rendered out of them. They're just about soft enough. I like to put the immersion blender into this and make a nice puree. Ooh, steamy. And then grind all that through the food mill to remove all the seeds and skin and then reduce down the resulting sauce. simply transfer our tomato sauce, still has skins and seeds, into the handy food mill, grind it all through, I 
then essentially what you have just seeds and skins and that will go to the pigs that is the product of all of our tomatoes seeds and skin removed everything pureed technically that's tomato juice so if you add a little bit of citric acid you can can this up just like that for tomato juice we're going to go ahead and uh, turn on a medium heat and let it start reducing down. Whenever you're cooking a acidic food like this, you want to make sure that you're using a stainless steel pot or something that's enameled. Although enameled will typically be thinner walled unless you're using like a Dutch oven. This pot has a nice half inch slab of stainless on the bottom, but you don't want to use aluminum or anything that is reactive because as always, acidic foods will eat away at that metal. There we have our roasted green chilies, our chopped Thai chili, jalapenos, and garden salsa, these guys here, which are surprisingly warm, but they've got a really nice flavor. And our onions are caramelized with our garlic. We'll put them in here and set that aside until the tomato has reduced to the point we want it. All the chilies, onions, garlic, cilantro, a couple of tablespoons of cumin into the sauce which has reduced down to a good consistency of course thicker when it's cool but that looks pretty good we'll bring this up to a boil fill our jars into the can and they are. We'll process for 15 minutes. Those pint jars here at a mile high. <laughs> 